Good morning, everyone. It's that time again. It's time for the Sunday school lesson. Uh, there's a lot of meat, so the lesson, I'm just going to warn you ahead of time, it's going to run a little bit long today, a little bit longer than normal. So uh, uh, one good thing about it being taped is you can watch a portion of it now, and then you can watch a portion of it uh, a little later. I just feel like this is what God gave me uh, to share with you guys uh, on this morning. The title of the lesson today is loving and just behavior and so the scriptures are coming from uh, Romans the 12th chapter verses 9 through 21 so even the scriptures itself are a little bit longer today so we're just going to try to get through it well the first thing I want to do is um, instead of singing the song I wanted to play the song I wrote this week part two you are That's just a little bit of the song because um, you already won the battle. And so um, let's go into my prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for this opportunity, for this venue, Lord God, to study your Sunday school lesson and study your word, Lord God. Lord, we're asking that you to touch each and every person that actually watches the video, Father God. If there's any sickness in their body, Father, we're asking that you would heal, Father God. Lord God, if they need a financial blessing, we're asking that you would bless, Lord God. But most of all, we're asking that we would grow nearer to thee, Father God. Our heart's desire is that we learn of you so that we can draw nearer to you, Lord God. And that when we're asked in Sunday school a question, that we may be able to answer uh, in good faith because we actually did do our study and Lord, we love you and appreciate you so much. Asking that you would touch each and every family represented uh, who listens to the video, Lord God. And Lord God, we're asking that you get the glory in it all. Because we know that you already won the battle that we're trying to fight. And Lord, that we want to walk around, Lord God, with this loving and just behavior, as the title suggests. Lord, we love you and appreciate you oh so much. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so we got to really dig deep and get uh, quickly into the lesson. Um, the title, I already gave you the title. So the first part of the lesson, uh, and I'm going to be reading a few of the scriptures or portions of the scriptures. And uh, like I said, uh, it's coming from Romans, the 12th chapter, which is one of, a, one of our uh, good chapters that we uh, read out of the first uh, part of that 12 and 1 talks about, you know, uh, presenting your body a living sacrifice. And so it, it's my suggestion that we read, you read the entire chapter of, of Rome, the 12th chapter of Romans. So, but we're going to dig into the ninth verse. Say so the ninth verse 
The first thing uh, it talks about is uh, we know that the, the Bible uh, radiates the concept of love. And so uh, throughout the entire New Testament, especially in the New Testament, and uh, like Jesus being moved with compassion or love your enemies or, you know, some of the suggestions even within these scriptures that we're going to talk about today, that um, it all comes from a place of love. And so if you are not doing things from a place of love, then you're, you have to be, you have to check yourself or ask God to, to help you to begin to do things from a place of love. Love gives you that opportunity to uh, be compassionate toward another person and, and not to always think of selfish or evil do deeds uh, for yourself. So we a place of love, that's what helps us. It says in the Bible uh, that love covers a multitude of sins. And so, you know, so we just want to look uh, at this love that's radiating throughout the scripture, because even though he's given us some correction and given us some instructions, the baseline is love and, 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 and having right behavior. So love in the Bible, there's 310 scriptures, uh, 310 scriptures that reference love uh, in the Bible or that utilizes love in the Bible, according to the strong. There are several types of love. And so before I get into it, the, since the first verse talks about let love without, uh, let love be without dissemination, uh, dissemination. So I wanted to talk about love first. And so there are several types of love. And I'm only going to talk about two of them. One is the agape love. That's the love that Jesus showed us. It's that affectionate love, the benevolence love, dear love, the deep, deep love, the lived love that he showed for us when he laid you know, when he gave his life up for us on the cross. And so, and then there's the um, filial love, which is the, the brotherly love or the friendly love. And so God is asking us to show, display both types of love throughout the scripture, to give love, to show compassion, to, to uh, be compassionate to our, our fellow man. And so uh, I also looked up the definition in the dictionary. And so uh, Webster says that love is a strong feeling, a feeling of strong or consistent affection for a person. And so, but we know that love is even deeper than that. I mean, we have love for a few things, some things we shouldn't have love for, but uh, we have love for more than just people. Sometimes we have love for things and we definitely have love for people and love for family. So, um so the title, uh, I'm just talking about the title. So the title to me basically is saying show affection and compassion and justice in our behavior. And so uh, the title by itself is speaking a message, telling us that we need to make sure that we're showing affection and love toward our brother, our fellow man and our brothers and sisters in Christ. So the first verse uh, talks about let love uh, be without dissemination. So, of course, I'm going to give you the definition of dissemination. Uh, the definition is to hide under a false appearance. So, in other words, fake. Being fake. <laughs> so, God is saying don't love uh, and be fake, basically, is what I got out of that. He said he wants us to show that real love. The second part of that verse is talking about, you know, do it, harboring evil or uh, in other words, to disregard or to um, have a strong dislike for evil. Um, and so then it says cleave to that which is good. And cleave means to, you know, uh, adhere force uh, firmly or closely and um, to grab a hold of it, basically. You know, like a mother, a child would grab a hold of his mother, you know, when they are uh, around strangers sometimes. They grab a hold real, real tight and you'd be like, okay, wait a minute. And so um, God just wants us to show that true love, to disregard evil, and to hold fast to that which is good. And that's just verse 9. And so God has just given us uh, uh, some principles uh, through the writings of, of Paul to, to remind us this is what we need to be doing. And so in verse 10, it talks about, um, he says, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honoring, preferring one another. So I, the, the first question, you know, I always have questions. First question I ask is, is why is Paul addressing uh, 
why is Paul addressing this in the church? Of course, you know, I'm always like, okay, so why did he say that? There's always a reason that uh, people say things. And so uh, what I felt that the Lord was sharing with me is that uh, because of the mixture of the church, the different social classes, uh, uh, the ethnicity clashes, uh, uh, he just wants us to remind us that we should treat our family with honor, the family being uh uh, Jesus said, my family is those that do the meat of God. So, you know, the believers in the church, the body of Christ. And so he's telling us telling us to be kind and affectionate uh, one toward another and to honor them um, in this. So then he starts to address some of the other things that are going on in the church. In verse 11, he talks about them. Uh, he said, he calls them slowful. Don't be slowful in business. Okay. And fervent in prayer and serving the Lord. And so uh, the slowfulness, I mean, there's a lot of definitions, but the main thing that I want to talk about is being tardy and late. And how I'm going to raise my hand because I'm terrible. <laughs> and the Lord is dealing with me about doing better and trying to be more on time. And I won't use the uh, the thing that happened to me when I was in Oklahoma City with 9-11 and I'm going to use this since I already mentioned this. So I always used to use the excuse, you know, if I had been on time uh, when the they blew up the federal building in Oklahoma City, I was in Oklahoma City at the time, uh, I was running late. I just stepped off the bus when the bomb blew, uh, but I was around the corner several, uh, several, uh, several blocks away uh, from the federal building. But had I been on time, I would not be here doing this video today. But we can't use that excuse because God said that we need to be done. He said, do things in decency and in order. And so he's just reminding them, addressing some of the things that's going on in the church. Stop being late. Stop being a slow for about business, uh, about God's business. And uh, be fervent. In other words, be uh, on fire for the Lord. And, and and also talks about serving the Lord. And, and so he's talking about not only the church business, but as we do regular business around the, you know, uh, to, to make a living. We need to meet, make sure that we are, you know, not being uh, soulful or tardy or, or different things of nature. Like I said, God's dealing with me and then I'm guilty as well. So uh, in verse 12, uh, he addresses, he says, rejoicing in hope. Uh, patient in tribulation, continually instant in prayer. Okay, the first thing I thought about was these are the characteristics that's going to help sustain us through our, our walk in Christ. We need to rejoice. Uh, rejoice and and be glad, you know, because it, it, in that rejoicing or in that praise, you know, we give God honor. And so be patient in tribulation because everybody has to go through something. I've heard many people say we're in a storm, we're coming out of a storm or getting ready to go through a storm, you know, but I just want you to know that wherever situation you're in, God is in there with you. He is helping you and assisting you. So he, we have to be patient when we go through trials and tribulations because God is going to bring us out. He did it for us before. He'll do it again. And then also to be constantly praying because the enemy is very busy. Now, we as Christians, we get slowful. We don't want to do what God is telling us to do. But I guarantee you the enemy is not sitting on the sidelines trying to figure out what you're getting ready to do because he has a plan of his own. And so we need to be making sure that we are about our father's business that we're doing what God has told us to do and if you have if you haven't started doing what God just just take a minute repent and go ahead and get about God's business I know that you know being on on the YouTube sometimes I get a little nervous and I get all excited and different things of that nature and I know this is something that God told me to do because this is not anything that I would do on a normal basis so I have to be obedient unto God and this is to also, you know, there not everybody can make it to church. And so this would be something that uh, if they, you know, have a, a computer or um, that they can be able to access access the Sunday school lesson um, through this venue. Now, there's other Sunday school lessons that are being taught on the on there as well. So, I mean, you know, I I listen to a couple myself, but um, normally it's after I after I do my YouTube video and normally after Sunday school. So, um, so in verse 13, he tells us, uh, he says, distributing to the necessities of the saints and giving into hospitality. So of course, you know, I was thinking, okay, I know, I believe I knew what hospitality really was, but of course I wanted to look it up and give you the definition. 
Hospitality is the generous, um, genuous and friendly treatment of visitors and guests providing for drink and also providing drinks and food for uh, guests or for customers. Um, and so basically hospitality is treating people right. You know, it is, you know, hospitality, the part of that, what I got out of that is that, you know, first of all, you know, that they had this distribution program where they were assisting the necessities of the saints. So they was all, so had sold all their goods and, and they were, uh, distributing those as needed to to the saints uh, and to the poor. And so God, he was just encouraging them to continue to, to do that. The other part of that is that I didn't realize that ushers or the greeters at the front door are also a part of the hospitality because it says that we need to treat them basically you know come to them with a, a joyous spirit as they come into the door so that's also a part of hospitality and then you know of course uh, in the generations of um traditions of the church when we have a guest speaker come you know we provide them with uh water or juice or whatever uh that they need to you know when they're giving the given the word you know and that's a part of hospitality as well and when we have uh, uh events you know we treat people right we feed them and do different things of that nature and then that's also a part of the hospitality so he's just encouraging them to continue doing these things uh, for the Lord. And so in verse uh, 14, um, he says, bless them which persecute you. Um, wow. Now we know that's going to be tough, right? So we know we're going to need the Lord to help us. Because sometimes we get, um, the Bible talks about not being weary and well-doing. So sometimes when we get to doing uh, different things and then we have come up against persecution or we come up against uh, people that are always trying to put you down or always trying to destroy uh, what you're talking about or always have something to say negative about the things that you're doing, um, you know, that can wear on a person. I'm just being honest. Just like water uh, can wear on the, uh, the sand and it and, uh, can destroy it can destroy stuff as well uh just as that flow strong flow of negativity and strong flow of persecution can wear on you that is why you need to stay in your word continue to pray and ask god for help uh because if you take it into your own hands and you don't leave it in god's hands then if God moves, you're going to be in the way and you're going to receive the wrath of God. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that a little later on when I get to the vengeance part. And so he said that we need, you know, by, the Bible also talks about by loving kindness have I drawn thee. So in other words, people are watching what you're doing. Yes, they may be persecuting you or they may be talking about you. How you react or how you behave about what they're doing is what they're watching because they want to say, I thought she was a Christian. I thought she loved the Lord. Even though they're being negative or evil towards you, they still want to see that Christ-like behavior or they will use it as an excuse to stay further away from the Lord. So uh, we need to watch our behavior, the things that we say and the things that we do. So let's move on to verse uh, 15. Uh, rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. Of course, we know that God is saying be happy uh, for others, you know, like people that are, uh, receive blessings. Be excited with them so that, you know, when your time comes, people will be excited with you. Uh, or, you know, if someone loses a loved one, you know, weep with those that weep. Uh, <clears throat> be compassionate toward them, is, in other words, is what um, Paul is reminding the body to do. In verse 16, here goes that one body concept again. Don't be high-minded, thinking more of yourself than others. Basically, still addressing that social class clashes. Social classes and ethnicity clashes is what I called it. And so he also addresses pride um, in this. You know, we know that pride comes before a fall. In other words, don't be conceited in your in the way you think. You think you know it all. You know, don't be conceited in that. That's a part of pride. In verse 17, um, in verse 17, he says, uh, don't do evil for evil. And then he also says to be honest. So 
you know me i'm thinking okay so why would he have to tell the church to be honest well we are surrounded even in today's land we are surrounded with corruption and so if you're not careful if you're not feeding the spirit of god feeding feeding god's spirit with spiritual things you, you're feeding your spirit with something and so it can get into your spirit if you're not careful or you need to pray and ask god to help you you need to continue to try to feed that's why he tells us you know be transformed be be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind renewing your mind reading your word prayer study uh you know going to church a fellowship uh with other believers uh that is how we renew our mind that is how we get rid of those corrupt things and then sometimes we do things thinking because it's society does those same things we think that they are okay to do but you have to ask god and to share with you and show you which way uh he wants you to go and so um he be honest uh you know be honest i mean that's just i really don't have to say much about that because you know that um and then you also have to remember the society that they lived in. You know, there was a lot of uh, people being dishonest, you know, uh, theft and, 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 and things of that nature. Same like it is today. And so he's saying, don't repay evil for evil. Um, and then that, as I go down a little further, uh, it talks about vengeance. And so in verse 18, he tells, he says it this way. And, and what was interesting about that is he said, he said, if it be possible... <laughs> as much as light in you. Notice what he says. Live peaceably with all men. If it be possible. If it be possible. I'm thinking, okay, now, uh, Paul, you're supposed to be, you know, telling us, to, you know, we need to live in peace. Um, but what he's saying is, if you if you look, look at it, I got out of that is that he said, if it be possible, that lieth in you. In other words, you have to have the love of God in you so that you can live in peace with other men. Wow. Okay, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna elaborate because I still got a few more verses to go on. But just think about that. So basically, Paul is saying whatever's on the inside of you will uh, if you have more of God on the inside of you, that uh, that gives you the opportunity to live peaceable with other men. And I'm getting over my time, so I need to hurry a little bit. So in verse, verse 19, he talks about, um, do, he says, avenge not yourself. Basically, vengeance is mine. That's, that's the just of that verse. Um, and, and, and I wanted to point out, uh, Paul said that um, in, in this verse, it says, vengeance is mine, the Lord, he will repay. But I want to point out why this may have had to be said. Why I believe. I always try to make sure that I say well, in verse in Numbers, the 35th chapter and verse 25, there is a provision for if someone murders someone else for them to be able to, uh, it's called a uh, blood vengeance, and uh, for them to be able to go and take vengeance on someone. If you murder my brother, then someone in the family can go and murder, murder you. There's a provision in the scripture, in the Bible, uh, for that, but God is saying here in this verse, or He's uh, prompting Paul to tell us and remind us that vengeance is His, and so you got to think about that. When we take the law into our own hands, then we uh, don't allow God to take a hold of that and and do uh, what He needs to do with that. And so remember that. And the verse again is Numbers thirty five and twenty seven that talks about uh, vengeance, uh, the blood vengeance. Um, repaying vengeance i'm almost done we only got two more verses so verse 10 uh, verse 20 talks about uh feeding the hung feeding your enemy so what <laughs> what that's what i said to myself what he said feed your enemy if they hungry and give them drink i said my enemy are you serious lord my enemy and so the other part of that says he heaps uh, coals of fire up on his head. And so what God shared with me is if I mistreat my enemy, I'm asking for the wrath of God to be placed on myself. I say, what? Because he says in that, um, that we, it, 
we need to allow God to work. I say, what? He says that just like the unsaved spouse is saved by watching the saved spouse and how they behave. And if you're behaving according to the scriptures, that's going to change their heart to want to come home. So if you come home and you're fussing and acting like the world, that's not going to draw your unsaved spouse to church or to be uh, in relationship. And I say church, I meant, I, I'm saying church, but really what I mean is into a relationship with Christ. Uh, because that's what it's all about. Everything that we do is supposed to be centered around saving souls. It's not about building synagogues. It's not about any of that. It is all about saving souls. Preaching the message of God. That was the com great commission. The great commission was for us to go out and save souls. To preach the word of God that people might be saved and not go to hell. There's two places we can go. Heaven. Oh hell, and we don't talk about that no more because we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But there's two places you can go, heaven or hell. And so we want to preach the gospel or, uh, you know, share the, the message of Christ, the love of Christ, which is what this whole message is about, uh, in a loving behavior uh, so that, that, you know, say souls may be saved. And so he said to me, if you, if you get in the way, then, you know, when the wrath of God comes, you... You you go receive it, and so uh, it is easy. It's easy. It is easy to repay somebody when they do something to you, to give it back to them. That's the easy part. But God is telling us to take the higher road. That if somebody does something to you, treat them with kindness, give them drink, give them food, treat them with loving kindness, and allow God. To change their heart by our behavior. Even though he's saying heaping coals of hot fire on their head. Really what he's saying is you're opening up the opportunity for the love of God to be placed into their heart. Mm -hmm. This also, um, I was reading somewhere that this also has is a provision for the uh, prisoners of war. You know, when we go into battle and we have prisoners of war, that we're also supposed to take care of them. You know, so feed them, uh, give them shelter, uh, and, and give them food and drink uh, and to take care of them if we have captured them. And so this is also a provision uh, for prisoners of war. And so um, the last one is the easiest one that I can talk about, and then I'm going to let you go. And in verse 21, he says, Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So here again, this good versus evil concept that, you know, each and every day, sometimes each and every moment, uh, we are um, faced with whether we should do good, whether we should do evil. We're either faced with someone doing bad to us. How should we, re should we retaliate or should we give it to God. And so God is just, uh, Paul has given us some concepts uh, for to help sustain us in our Christian walk. And so the title of the lesson again is loving and just behavior. And so God is just reminding us that we need to be showing compassion in all the things that we do, not just to our fellow man, especially to the believers, but also to our enemies and those that are surrounding us. All right. Y'all tell me what you think about the song or if you even heard it. All right. God bless. See you next time.